Hello guys, Solitaire Gamer here, and today I'll be reviewing Science Gate Zero. This anime was a What If Things Went Differently in episode 23 of the original series. What if Okabe didn't save Chris? You do have to watch the alternative version of episode 23 in the original series before watching this anime. I'm a big fan of Science Gate, so even if this was a What If scenario and not a sequel, I was still going to watch it. I like watching the concept of time travel in the original series. It had a unique take on time travel, which I hadn't seen before, which is sometimes no matter how hard you try to change something, the result won't change. When I saw the alternative version of episode 23, I couldn't wait until the anime for Science Gate Zero came out. The premise was so interesting. In Science Gate Zero, it is an alternative timeline where Okabe doesn't save Chris, and instead honors her sacrifice and lives on in the world without her. He doesn't have a great time adjusting to life without her though, as no matter how much time passes by, he can't stop thinking about her. Okabe has changed from a happy guy that said crazy things at times to a depressed guy that wants to act normal now. It's not just him that is unhappy, his friends are unhappy as well as they see their friends suffering and can't do anything about it. Not only does Okabe have to deal with the loss of Chris, but World War III will be occurring in the future since he didn't save Chris. Suzuka tried to convince Okabe to go back in time to save Chris, but he refuses. Okabe is living a depressing life until one day he sees an invention called Amadeus, which is an AI that can store a person's memories and act like that person. The person that Amadeus is based on is Chris. Okabe has been asked to interact with Amadeus, and now he must deal with the loss of Chris head on. He can't run away from what's been bothering him anymore. This anime had less action than the original series in terms of time travel. In the original series, characters were changing the present time, and from episode 12 onwards, Okabe was constantly time traveling. This anime though, was more trying to appeal to viewers emotionally by showing how much Okabe was suffering. It had a really slow start and it took a while before the action finally got going. That is why this anime was somewhat polarizing. There were people saying this anime was a 10 out of 10 and how it made them feel so sad and emotional. While there was another group of people who did not like this slow pace and kept saying the original series was better. There is not a wrong or right answer in terms of if this anime was amazing or not. It is just that a film like anime series where there is more focus on the emotional aspect like in Anohana, Violet Evergarden, Canon and Clanad, then you probably won't like Science Gate Zero. For me though, from start to finish, I found this anime entertaining to watch. I like watching an emotional anime series, and it does get more emotional than this. As viewers, we got to see how much Okabe was suffering from hearing him talk with other people, and we got to hear his inner thoughts. He was truly suffering on the inside, and I just felt so bad for him. I can understand why he was acting the way he was. He basically had sacrificed Chris's life in order to save my Yuri. Can you imagine how that must feel? To sacrifice the person you love the most, that would tear anyone apart. He had to go through many sad situations in the season, as he had to relive terrifying scenarios that happened in season 1 all over again. It was like no matter what he did, things would end up bad. I felt really sad for Okabe. Seeing him interact with Amadeus was heartbreaking to watch. He kept talking to Amadeus as if that was really Chris, and was depressing to see. He really did love Chris, and wanted to talk to her again. I was really excited to watch each episode of the season, as I just wanted to see Okabe get out of this bad situation, and become the cheerful mad scientist that he once was. But besides the drama involved with Chris, this anime had just a depressing atmosphere in general. I like this dark atmosphere, as it just makes moments where the characters overcome all obstacles that much more memorable. Okabe and his friends were still being targeted by an unknown organization for some unknown reason. They couldn't even relax in this timeline, and had to live in fear. Also, there was the issue of World War III. It was like characters were trying to live their normal life, even with knowing that World War III and the end of the world would come soon. They knew the end of the world was coming, but it was like there was nothing they could do. Okabe didn't want to do anything about it. Can you imagine if you knew the end of the world was coming soon? Like how would you even find the willpower to live on? It was interesting seeing characters trying to be happy when they're being targeted, and they know incoming doom would be occurring soon. I was really amazed at how these characters were still trying to enjoy life, despite living in a messed up timeline. This season went to depth about World War III, and it was interesting seeing the mastermind behind everything. I was in shock when I saw who the mastermind was. World War III had a shocking turn. It turns out that CERN was not the organization causing the conflict in this season, but another organization. There were so many organizations trying to take the time travel machine. It was fascinating seeing Okabe take on all these organizations at once. The last few couple of episodes were non-stop action. It was also great seeing how all these characters would look in the far future. Some of their appearances shocked me. From the start of this anime until near the end of this anime, I felt the long build up from showing Okabe 
as a depressed character who is scared to mess with time travel to becoming the mad scientist that isn't afraid of anything. Old characters and new characters were encouraging him to save Chris and not leave things as they are now. Seeing Oak Bay overcome this mental pain was fascinating to watch because it was like he not only went through this tragic situation once, he went through the pain of seeing someone die over and over and over again. To see him gather up his strength and courage to face this difficult situation again made you really want to see him succeed. In terms of new characters for the season, I felt like they were a great addition to the main cast of characters. Maho was a fun character to watch as she looked like a young girl that never aged. It was fun seeing her have a complex about it. She did a great job at crushing Okabe to face the unknown and to make the time travel machine again. Professor Liskinen seemed like a character just used for comedic relief at first, but it turned out to be a much more complex character than that. He was the most interesting new character by far. Kagari is Mayuri's adopted daughter in the future, and I felt like she was a great character to add to the show. It gave us a character besides Okabe to focus on. This anime showed us her sad past, and it was really sad seeing her struggle with living on. She had to endure sad situation after sad situation. The opening for each episode was good. It reminded me of the opening for the original series. I really liked the visual of Okabe trying to save Chris in the opening. The ending for each episode was okay. The song wasn't that great to listen to. The music during the episodes was amazing. It had songs from the original series and new songs as well. I really liked the song that played near the end of episode 8. It made that final scene really emotional to watch. The animation style looked great. It looked just like the animation style used 7 years ago for the original series. I'm glad they didn't change it. The animation looked great in this anime. The characters moved smoothly, especially during action scenes where they had to run away or fight people from various organizations. I felt like while this anime was not as good as the original series, I still really enjoyed it. There was less action, but it felt just as emotional as the original series. It was really sad to see Okabe suffering and being depressed because Chris isn't around anymore. It was fascinating seeing him overcome his fears and slowly become the mad scientist he once was. This anime is really slow at first in terms of pacing, but the build up towards Okabe returning to his old self made the slow pacing worth it. Episode 21 was simply amazing to watch. I do recommend people that like the original series to watch Science Gate Zero. Just be prepared for slow pacing, slice of life scenes, and seeing a lot of emotional scenes early on. The later episodes are amazing, and even if you don't like slice of life scenes, I wouldn't drop it because of that. I give this anime a 9 out of 10. So that's all I want to talk about for today. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day night wherever you are, and please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and please comment if you found anything interesting in the video.